Hey, what up, players? It's Will Boss Tip. This month, today we're going to do a tartan pattern. Let me show you an example. Uh, here we go. So these are my Bretonians. I'm gonna make them look kind of dirty and muddied up, but um, basically it's a cool freehand design. This video might take a little while because of how <coughs> intricate the design has to be, but uh, we'll try to make it as quick and painless as we can. The paints you're gonna need are Cantor Blue, Calador Sky, Doom Bowl Brown, XV88, Wa Flesh, Moot Green, and if you want, uh, like I'm going to be doing it on my Bretonians, so I'm going to make them dirty with some Agrax Earthshade. Da -da -dirty. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your Cantor Blue and you're going to give the entire surface area a nice coat. And um, I already did that part. You just put it on your wet palette <clears throat> and um, thin it out with some water and just coat the surface area. I actually was filming this first and um, I was just kind of rambling and talking because in order for the paint to dry, you need to let it wait a little bit. So uh, the paint should be just about dry now. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some Doom Bowl Brown and we're gonna draw the design. Now for those of you new painters out there, uh, freehand design, freehand basically means putting a pattern onto a model without having any kind of uh, embossed design to to uh, follow. So um, it's, it's a little bit of an advanced technique, but I'm going to teach you the easiest way that you can get into doing it. You're just going to take your brush, you're going to dip it in some water, and you're going to smooth out the edge, make sure that it's nice and sharp and pointy. Then you're going to drag it along the bottom of the lid to just get a little bit of paint on. And then what I like to do is, it should still have some water from when you dipped it into the water. And then I just kind of like to straighten it out on my, on my little thumb there. You can also do this on your wet palette, but basically, you, you don't want to have a thick glob of paint oops, on your, on your brush tip. What we're going to do is we're going to draw vertical lines. Oh, I've got... Sorry, I apologize. I've, I glued this thing on the back. Um, but not thinking I would use it for a tutorial or anything. So, as you can see, I'm just trying to draw some straight lines. <clears throat> onto onto the, the cloth and you shouldn't do it in just one go because the paint is going to be so thin you want to kind of spread it out and do like this drag slow drag it down the down the model you're also going to have to eyeball the distance and uh, the the tricky thing with this is not getting upset with yourself at the very beginning I know that if you do it's gonna take you forever to get through you're basically just doing an approximate let's see if I need to zoom in a little bit an approximate distance from each line the next. Don't be afraid to keep going back to your, your paint pot. <coughs> Now some models that might benefit from a good tartan pattern are that I can think of would be like Bretonians, the peasants, especially the bowmen. I don't know about the men-at-arms, I've never seen, I, I haven't had a chance to break down their models yet, but any, any model that has a wide open 
area of cloth to work with would be very good. You want there to be some distance between each vertical line because <clears throat> we're going to be painting the green stripes on last. If you paint your, also if you paint your, your these brown stripes a little too close together, what's going to end up happening is that it won't be easy to highlight in between them. Another thing that might be tricky is getting the hang of painting on a curved surface. So you just kind of want to go with the fold and be as, you know, as, as, as careful as you can be. So after painting all these vertical stripes, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to paint horizontal stripes. And I like to start from the top and work my way down. But you could also start from the bottom and work your way up. That's a little bit more forgiving actually because then the spacing won't get all <clears throat> won't get all funky. So what I like to do is, for this model, we're going to try doing three lines. Don't know if we'll get all three, but we're going we're gonna to try to fit them in. I had to fix a mistake. If you make a mistake, you just go back with go over it with the, the paint that you, you were using one step earlier. So in this case, I'll just take my Cantor Blue, if I see something I don't like, and I'll just fix it with that. I'll show you a little example. You don't want the lines to be too thick, so I purposely painted on one of these stripes a little bit too thickly down here by the bow. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back over with some Cantor Blue and just clean it up a little bit. The great thing about doing freehand patterns as well is that you want to go back because just continually going forward, your pattern is, unless you are some painting phenomenon, <clears throat> your pattern is going to look a little bit sloppy. So you're going to want to go back and do this. And what this also does is when you go back with the Cantor Blue, you thin the line that you just painted. So if you put too much paint by accident on one of the Doom Bowl brown stripes, then what you're doing is really cleaning it up, smoothing out the, the distance between each square, and it's really going to end up making your model look a lot better. So we've only got a little bit more to paint with this one. the last stripe. Hallelujah. So when painting a grid pattern like this, like if you're doing checks on an orc or uh, checkers on a harlequin, then um, the most important thing is to eyeball the distance and your brain and your eyes have to constantly be working together with your hand, uh, with the tip of your brush, so that you are aware of where 
where you need to be painting this line. And I know it sounds simple, but this is a concept that I took me a very long time to master. I, I don't even think I mastered it yet, but I'm, I'm working on it. The concept is that <coughs> your eye might see and gauge the distance uh, correctly and tell your brain, okay, you're a little bit too far to the lower line or too far to the upper line, but then your hand, meanwhile, is kind of going on an autopilot, especially if you're painting this, well, if you're doing something like this when you're tired or when you're, um, you know, when you've got stuff on your mind or if you're painting while you're listening to a podcast or something and you're just not concentrating. All right, so there we go. Full grid all the way around the model. Let's take a moment to look at that. If any of those lines look a little too thick, you can just go back over them. But really, at this point, you don't want them to be perfect. We are not looking for perfection <clears throat> just yet. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our Calador Sky and we are going to paint within the blue and highlight all the blue. <clears throat> so doing the same thing, we're just getting paint on the tips of our brush. And all you're doing is just painting within the lines. Now with this, uh, you don't want to just stab the, the brush tip down because then the paint could spread in any direction. So what I like to do is just kind of drag it in constantly in one direction. So I'm going from top to bottom or, or my, my brush is just going up and down like this, up and down, up and down. I'm not doing side to side, just doing up and down and then side to side to only at the end to fix any stray paint strokes. But by having a consistent brush stroke going in one direction all the time, you are able to um, have a have a seamless look to your model and the, the paint goes where you want it to. <coughs> Turn the model, so instead of painting it sideways, uh, just to get through this area with the pouch and the hammer, I'm just going to turn it to the side. Man, I've just gotten back into having enough time to watch all of the uh, videos that I've been missing out on. And I can't wait to get through all of them. I've been missing so much these past couple of weeks. Again, like I said before, if you make a mistake, the last step that we did was painting on the dark, uh, the more, what is it called? Doombo Brown used to be dark flesh, those stripes. So if you just so happen to 
make a mistake with your Calador Sky, say you paint uh, over one of the lines, then all you have to do is go back and redraw that line in. I'm gonna cross my fingers, knock on wood, and hope that I don't mess up so we can keep going. So I'm gonna pray that the camera's in focus. Is the camera in focus, Igor? I don't even know why you ask me that, Master. The camera is always in focus. Oh, Igor, you need to check your eyesight, buddy. I've been looking at some of the last videos and they've been looking quite uh, blurry sometimes. But it's not my fault, Master. I have cataracts. <clears throat> Cataracts, is that like a, one of your stupid puns on having cats in your eyes? No, dummy, I have cataracts in me eyes. Oh, okay. Uh, next, what we're doing, oh, we are <clears throat> going to take our XV-88 and we are going to paint where the uh, lines, where the Doombo brown lines cross. Now the, uh, the guide on Zenova says to use vermin brown and uh, the equivalent of vermin brown is, oh I can't remember off the top of my head, but I, I found that using this, which is kind of like the, the old snake bite leather, has a nicer pop finish. So the good thing about this one is that you're just kind of dabbing the paint onto where the crosses are so you want to be careful because you could potentially potentially screw up like or not screw up but have to go back two steps to paint either a Dumbo brown line or if you get it in the blue Calador sky but the great thing is as long as you keep the paint on the very tip of your brush and keep your hands braced. That's, that's another thing I wanna talk about, bracing your hands. So I've got my cork here with a little bit of poster tack on the top to secure the model. And all I'm doing is I'm wrapping my, my, my hand around it and I'm bracing the bottom of my hand against my painting table. So this is really not gonna move very much. This hand that I'm painting with, the painting is all done with uh, my, like my fingers here, this kind of motion. And the palm of this hand my right hand is braced against the uh, meat of the left hand. Probably should have gone over that in the beginning. Oh well. So as you can see, it uh, it pops out really nicely against the brown, the Doombo brown. to go here. Oh, doing it in real time. Real time, folks. So I messed up just a little bit on on that last one. I got it. I got the XV88 a little bit too low. So what it did was kind of messed up the spacing on the line. So I'm just going to paint it up a little bit higher. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Dumbo Brown and uh, just fix up that line. So each time you want to fix up those lines, remember to dip the tip of your brush in water and just kind of get that point back. You want a little bit of that water still on the tip of your brush but not enough that it's going to dilute the paint as you're painting. And you spread it down across your hand. Just 
and then just go back and clean. So this is what your model should look like at this point. Pretty cool. All right, the next step is we're gonna take our wall flesh, doing the same thing we did with the Doombo Brown. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to paint green vertical stripes, just the vertical stripes. And we're gonna paint those in between each of the lines. Now this step is, this green stripe step is <clears throat> last because you're gonna be painting over the Doombo Brown lines that are going vertically. That makes sense. Or uh, horizontal. Horizontal. You're painting over them. You're painting over everything. The blues, the, the browns. That's why it's very important that you make sure that you're happy with the grid of the Doombo Brown before this because this next step is going to kind of change everything up. I'm also going to say that this step is going to be optional. You don't have to do this part if you're happy. Now, you shouldn't even see it too much. It's not going to pop out uh, and we, we don't want it to really. We just want to see a little bit of color differentiation in these in these straight lines. I'll tell you what is going to pop out though, the moot green that we're going to paint over this. So we're just laying the groundwork and um, the reason we're doing that with, with say, this one say instead of like scarsnet green or a brighter green is because this green is going to allow you to easily go back and fix. It's not that bright. Once you get the, the moot green on though, that is going to be it my friends. Alright, so it should look something like this. I'm not even sure if you can see the, the wah flesh. Right, and the last one is this moot green. I think I've got just enough space on my memory card. I think we're going at uh, 25 minutes-ish. So let's see if we can finish this. Now the trick with this is uh, you may not want to paint it all the way down the line because moot green is so bright. You might just want to highlight a little bit of that wall flesh like anything that's on the flat surface area. You, you don't want to go into the, like the folds of the cloth, if you know what I mean. And just like all the other, just like all the other times, we're just dragging Dragging the paint down. The danger of having too much brush, uh, paint on your brush tip is that you leave a line that has really fat, messy edges. And th that's why it's really important to kind of get all that gunk off of your thumb onto your thumb, I mean, before you put the brush tip to the model. What it might mean is that you have to go back if, there, if you don't have enough paint on your brush because you wiped it all off on your thumb. But really that's a small price to pay for not having to go back and redo all your hard work. This one 
line over here is actually supposed to be Dumbo Brown, not green. Okay. And the last thing I have to do is paint little dots of uh, XV88 onto that brown, Dumbo brown little line that I made, and then this little guy will be done. And there you have it. He is all done and ready for the fighting. Now that would be like a <clears throat> a normal guy that is uh, is wearing his tartan pattern, and he's he's ready to fight and he's real proud of it. Because this is Dirty Bowman, we're gonna dirty it up with some Agrax Earthshade. Now the tricky thing about using Agrax Earthshade is that it is really with the pigments and stuff. It's really, really dark. If you just paint it straight out of the bottle, it's gonna get stuck in, uh, in all the wrong places and just really pull and kinda obscure the hard work that you did. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a bigger brush, dip the tip in some water. There's still some water like all over the tip and I'm going to just get a little bit of Agrax Earthshade, dip it back into some water and paint it onto my model here. I think you want like a a two to one ratio of of water to shade. If you have more than that the shade is going to uh, obscure the detail. Basically what we're doing is we're toning all the colors together. It's getting rid of your um, any brush strokes that you did and it just kind of ties ties the model together really nicely. You can also, if you have matte varnish, I would suggest using that paint on matte varnish. Just put a little bit, mix a little bit of it with some water and just a tiny drab, uh, dab, I mean, of Agrax Earthshade. You paint that over and that, that is gonna give you a really nice finish. There you have it. Got a little bit more. Just to dirty them up. And that, this of course is to taste, meaning you do it until you're happy with it. You just don't want to ruin the good work that you did. And there you go. Look at that. Freehand. So I'm going to post this up and uh, a challenge I'd like to make to all of you is to see what you can paint this tartan pattern onto. So give it a try, let me know how it goes right below in the comments and um, also follow that link to Zenova's website. I'll, um, I'll attach it in the link below because it's, it's just so good. Uh, Genova, sorry. J-E-N-O-V-A. I'll, I'll attach it in the link below, so go there to see how to do it step by step. But I uh, hope you enjoyed watching it through this tutorial, and we'll see you in the next video. Latest players!